Want the secrets to making a head pin for a bead dangle with a ball on the end using sterling silver wire? Hi, this is Jen Hanscom, your practical guide for making quality crafted silver jewelry at home. In this video, I give you the top three reasons why you should make your own head pins, and I demonstrate the process describing exactly where to aim the heat and the best flux to use to keep the ball from dimpling too much. So let's dive in. If you're interested in making your own head pins, then this is the perfect video for you. I can't recommend enough that you make your own head pins and use this method where you melt a little ball at the end for the finial. There's three reasons why. One is that you can choose the gauge of wire that you're using. Two is that you get to choose the length of that wire so you can make a head pin whatever length that you desire. And then the other thing is, is that the little finial is basically a, the wire itself melted into a ball and that makes it extremely durable. And that's a great feature in your handmade jewelry. So let's dive in and I'll show you how to make it. Got a cross lock tweezer. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up this wire here. This happens to be a two inch length of 20 gauge wire. That size will be perfect to add a bead dangle with an open loop. Now, when I go to make these little uh, finials, I wanna add some flux onto the wire. So this here is some boric acid and alcohol, and I'm gonna go ahead and dip that wire into the boric acid and alcohol mix. Now, I didn't dip so deep that the tweezers went into the flux, but I do have a nice coating on most of the length of that wire. I'm just gonna set that down for a moment, and I'm gonna remove that flux from my heat station. The alcohol in the flux is extremely flammable, so you really need to be very cautious about keeping it away from anything warm. Now I'm going to um, get ready to melt the ball. Here I have a Blazer Big Buddy torch, just a little butane lighter, essentially. Now there's a safety here. There's an igniter button here. And then there's a lock here. And then you can just set it down. It's got that uh, base that holds it for you. Very helpful. Now the anatomy of the flame itself is such that there's this little light blue cone here and then the flame extends beyond that. This spot right here, just in front of that light blue cone, that is your target spot. That's the hottest part of the flame. Inside the cone here, you can see it would interrupt that cone and it's not quite as hot there. It's not quite as hot way out here either. The, the real true hot heat of that flame is right in front of that light blue cone, as you can see by that solder pit heating up. So here I have my wire with the flux. You can see that the flux has got like a white coating on the wire now, and some of the alcohol has burned away. Now when I go to put this fluxed wire into the flame, there will likely be some uh, green flame that shows up. That would be the alcohol and flux burning away. What our goal is, is to heat the bottom segment of the wire by slowly moving it up and down in the flame until the core of the wire gets a nice bright red or perhaps almost even orange. Once we heat up the wire and it has that red glow, we're going to have the flame so that it's just underneath the bottom and then we want to basically chase the wire up as it melts to make the little ball. Here we go. There's that green flame. Flex burning away, the wire core is getting red and there's that little wire. It's pretty quick, especially with the big buddy torch. You could use a smaller torch to make that a little bit slower. Once the piece is, uh, has the little ball on it, you can go ahead and drop it in some quench water. Once it's cooled in the quench water, here actually, we'll 
turn that torch off first. Also be careful because this part of the torch is now hot. You don't want to uh, end up touching that burn yourself. But once it's in the quench water, then you can go ahead and transfer it into the acid bath in the pickle pot. And uh, once, give it a few minutes in there or so until all of the oxidation and darkness from the wire goes away and it looks like it's a white wire or whitish. And then you can go ahead and uh, polish that away and use it in your pieces. So this was a great little quick overview but there's lots more to show you from different weights of wire the different approaches how to avoid things going wrong what to do if they do go wrong how to fix things and uh, some different torches and overall how to set up your workspace and be safe so if you're interested in more check out the Jewelry Classes with Jen Learning Center. The full video is housed in the membership.